We're waiting to talk about a really serious condition that, and I've got a friend who's got a son with this condition, and it is, I don't know, it just seems a huge mountain to climb, and my mate who I was at school with, most of his adult life has been spent worrying about his boy, and he's a lovely guy, and they're a lovely, lovely family, and he's a great young man, but cystic fibrosis, man, uh, cystic fibrosis can really take a toll um, from what I've seen on families. And it is a chronic and, well, some would say, eventually fatal uh, condition that requires a hell of a lot of management. And from everyone I've seen, everyone I know or who knows someone, uh, just an incredible amount of love is needed uh, to live with uh, cystic fibrosis. And therefore, it was very, very good news um, to find that Pharmac had changed it's setting for a particular drug. And I really do think it's an important story. And we've mentioned the controversy around the story itself, but I thought it would be good today to talk to uh, Lisa Burns, the CEO of Cystic Fibrosis New Zealand, about really what this decision means for how many people in New Zealand and the battle to get Tricafta funded in New Zealand. Lisa, welcome to the platform. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Sean. How are you? Good, thank you. Good, and, and really good to talk to you about, and as I said, I, I, I know uh, an old school friend of mine has got a son with cystic fibrosis and just the remarkable, I'm not going to say toll, the remarkable challenge that this disease presents because of the way it manifests itself, presents for families. It's a, it's a long-term sort of chronic condition um, the prognosis always seems bad or difficult. Um, what difference does Trikafta make to how many or what proportion of cystic CF sufferers? Yeah, so uh, you definitely have a, a really good, a solid understanding of cystic fibrosis. Uh, it is a condition for whole of life. So the usual um, diagnosis happens at birth with the heel prick test and uh, cystic fibrosis is the most common life-threatening genetic condition in New Zealand. And wow. essentially... What that means is that the average life expectancy currently is 31 years of age, which is very young. And it has improved over the years. Uh, you know, a couple of decades ago, you know, it was probably more like teenage years. Uh, and so things have progressed since then. But, well, Tricast is just a game changer for people living with cystic fibrosis. In August, after Pharmac had done their assessment, they announced that Trikafta could give people with cystic fibrosis an additional 27 years, um, which almost doubles their life expectancy. And, uh, and that is, I mean, the story for why you would fund a medicine like that is pretty compelling. Well, why wouldn't um, when you? Look I, at I, the, the story is why wouldn't you? Isn't yeah, it? <laughs> you and, and, and that's... That's what we had been uh, advocating for this whole time. But when we, I mean, we knew there was so much evidence to, to basically back up why you would fund after it was funded in more than 30 other countries. Yeah. And, you know, the research, the, the worldwide data, which showed, you know, the, the risk of early death reducing, the risk of lung transplants reducing, the number of hospitalizations and infections. I mean, it was huge and really compelling. It was so a, a, a massive really increase in life expectancy and quality of life. Um, Absolutely. Is it, is it a drug that everyone who's got cystic fibrosis is going to work for everyone who's got cystic fibrosis, or does it have variation and variant to it? There will be variation um, for within the community as to um, how it will work, and we know that it won't work for everyone. Um, there will be a specific um, set of criteria for people who will be eligible, and that will be based largely on their, uh, their gene mutation, um, which, which gets diagnosed yeah. um, at birth. Uh, but essentially... Uh, so there are, are some... Aware. Can I just clarify? There are some... Uh, unfort are there some CF sufferers who, because of the specificity of their mutation, 
a trikafka won't work for them. It it there are three hundred and eighty eight people of the five hundred and seventy odd that mm. we know are eligible for trikafka. Those were the numbers that we were given before it was officially um, mm. you know before this announcement. Mm. We are working through what this will mean, and it is our hope that with the Kaleidoco medication that's already funded in New Zealand and Trikafta, the majority of the CF community will be able to be on a modulator of some wow. sort. Wow, and so that is universal. That, that's, that's neat. It is pretty, um, pretty big. And then we obviously have our, our zero to six, and so Trikafta will be available for six and over, and so that just means that uh, our babies that are born now will have the potential to have this medication available to and them when they the ben- six. And imagine the benefit of that in a lifetime. And as I say, the oh, thing about CF, it's yeah. not just... Because parents know, so it becomes a journey from the observations I've seen shared by a whole family. Um, and it changes lives and changes family dynamics forever. Um, Absolutely, yeah. yep. So that, Without question. So that would change. Jeez, uh, that's just such... I'm sorry, I just, I just now understand why it's such, such a neat thing. How many people would see if in New Zealand? Uh, it's about 570. It is 570, that, okay. Yeah, and if you think about uh, a family, a whanau, the community, all of the clinicians, all of the, the social and economic benefits... There will be thousands of people affected by yeah. this decision. It's, yeah. it's not just the person with the diagnosis. Yeah. It's absolutely, it's kind of like a ripple in a pond effect. There yeah. is a, a huge wide-reaching positive impact yeah. um, across so many different people uh, in New Zealand yeah. because of this decision. Yeah. Uh, Lisa, do you think it should have taken as long as it did? No. <laughs> Um, it shouldn't have taken this long. Uh, getting medications funded in New Zealand is a long and complex process. We know that the two and a half years it's taken to get Trikafta to this point is probably shorter than the usual trajectory to get a medication funded in New Zealand. But what this does open is the conversation about how medicines like Trikafta, which are a, a precision modern medicine, are funded in this country. And we need to, to really look at how things work overseas and, and take take the lead from this opportunity. Mm. See Trikafta as a game changer, a trailblazer, if you like, um, as to how modern medicines can be funded so that we can get New Zealand... And a get little to bit the people up. who need them more quickly than this did. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And, you know, we need to think about the economic benefits of medications like this, which are an investment which yeah. will give back to the health system long term. Yeah. Lisa, do Pharmac want to have that conversation? I think everyone wants to have that conversation. Uh, it's a really important conversation for us to have, and it's something that we have been advocating for uh, for a long time. Yeah. And it is something, you know, New Zealand is currently at the bottom of the OECD when it comes to funding... Uh, new medicines, and yeah. I think there is a job to do yeah. to improve that um, because, we, you know, we cannot forget that even though Tricast has been funded, which is incredible, there are a lot of people waiting for life. So I'm going to come back to my question, which you didn't an- answer. Do you think Pharmac well, and the government wants to have the conversation? It's a good question, Sean. I'm it's gonna a take, really good question. I'm going to take that as a no, which kind of brings me to what I... I think, I, uh, I think they do. I think they do want to have... I think they do want to have the conversation. I think it's just... Uh, we needed a platform, really, to open up this conversation because it's something that we have been positively advocating and talking to Farnak and the government about... I think it's just we really need to start having serious conversations now about how we improve medicine access in New Zealand. And yeah. I think this is a really important conversation that will uh, take place with the election next year because I think it's something that really does impact a whole lot of Kiwis. Yeah. Lisa, uh, and I leave this towards the end of the interview because I think the stuff we've talked about at the top is the important stuff. 
um, and I don't want to, if you like, disrespect the conversation we've previously had, but God, the release of this decision was a dog's bloody breakfast in terms of public relations. And I will, uh, if I could just quickly lay out what I think happened, Pharmac wanted a very, very soft story that was all good news for the government. They went and did a deal with Patrick Gow. They gave him at least a week's early access to the um, information and to the decision. Um, they got the Woman's Weekly involved in doing a piece, I think, about Paddy or something. There was some deal there. And then when Rachel Smalley, who I know has been involved in these issues for quite some time, actually told the story on Friday ahead of a completely created embargo, Pharmac churlishly issues this ban on MediaWorks and tells her actually that she's wrong in her story when she's got it bang on. And then the people who will benefit from this drug basically get told to watch the 6 o'clock news on News Hub so, and watch Paddy Gough crying on a Sunday night before they know the good news. Do you think that reflects well on the media, on Pharmac and on the government or not? Honestly, Sean, this is uh, not something that I really want to provide comment on. Uh, we have been absolutely focused on our community and obviously we are aware of what is playing out in the media at the moment. Did I get it uh, wrong, do you think? Do you think I got it wrong? I'm not. I'm Honestly, Sean, I'm not going to comment. Um, it's not my place to comment. This is something between the media, government and Pharmac, and it's not something that I want to wade into. Um, our relationships with uh, all of those parties are vital to the success of, of what has happened. And I, you hit the nail on the head. We don't want to take away from how incredible this announcement is for our community. And truthfully, Cystic Fibrosis New Zealand has just been focused on our community, what this means for our community. We still have work to do. Yeah. There are submissions that need to be made. And and for us, this has just been about celebrating and enjoying the news of this announcement ahead of Christmas. Yeah, I, I, I hear you and, and I respect your view, Lisa. I just think it's a damn shame when politicians, journalists um, and public servants um, manipulate the sufferers that of a disease for their own ends. And uh, I do think it's a great decision and it will bring literally joy uh, to many New Zealanders. I'd like to thank you for the work you do, uh, Lisa, and for joining us on the platform this morning. Thanks so much, Sean. Appreciate your time. Cheers. That is uh, Lisa Burns, the CEO of Cystic Fibrosis uh, New Zealand. Um, and I just thought you might want to know what the whole thing's been about. What an amazing, um, what an amazing drug, what an amazing change. So you start getting this at six plus, it just changes the whole profile of what your life and your family's life is going to be like if it's reducing the chance of all the nasty things that happen to people with cystic fibrosis. Um, Sean, imagine how many new drugs could be funded instead of the media merger. So pleased this drug is finally uh, funded. That is joy. Lovely text, Joy. Thank you.